in the day of the Lord. Second Peter, third chapter, verses 1 through 15, and go right into the point of my scripture. We look at this lesson this morning. We're looking for a hope. And you know, hope is built on a promise. And someone promised me you will follow the promise. A promise is a binding declaration between two more people or institutions. Only God can this week's lesson, Peter confirmed that Christ promises to return and to usher the new heaven and the new earth. That's going to happen. A new earth and a new heaven. This lesson that Peter writes to the church, there's going to come a time, and you're going to see it more evident. Uh, there's going to come a time when there are going to be more false teachers, more false prophets. Uh, they're going to get away from the word of God. They're going to institute and create their own doctrine, but they're the one teaching the prophets. But we have to be grounded and rooted in the word of God. We know what our doctrine is. We know what we believe. And we have to stand fast on that belief. Peter writes to the church because there was a heresy that was some false teaching going on. People were telling believers that judgment wasn't going to come. They were telling that uh, uh, the Lord had already come. Can, can I tell you this? You, you can take that and think judgment ain't going to come, but you live your life any kind of way, I think you're going to be in distress. Everybody is going to have to stand before God. And, and, and the reason Peter was so interested in these believers, because their lives were reflecting that. They were thinking since there is no judgment, we can live any kind of way because we don't have to answer to anybody. Uh, uh, our lives can be upside down or loose or whatever we want to do, we can do because we don't have to be accountable for nothing. And Peter writes to the church to let them know that this is not so. There's going to come a time when Christ returns. Christ will come in his second advent. Uh, we talk about the day of the Lord. It's coming. You can believe it's coming. You may be alive. You may be sleeping in your grave. But it's coming. But but as believers, whether we're alive or whether we're sleeping in the grave, we are still excited about that day. We still have hope. Uh, because it says even when he comes, first of all, those that are asleep will arise first. And then those alive will yet be caught up with him. So we're, it's a win-win situation for us. We can't lose. Uh, so, so that ought to be some excitement. That ought to be look, something that we can look forward to. So, so in this lesson, as we look at it today, there's basically four uh, outlines, the four subjects that it, it, it we're talking about. First thing we're going to talk about is believe God's word. That's Second Peter, uh, uh, the second chapter. I mean, 2 Peter 3rd chapter is the first four verses. Believe God's word. You know that word believe has a lot of emphasis. We have to really believe before we can go forward. Belief has a strong foundation. Whenever you believe something, it has a lot of action behind it. Uh, uh, when you really believe something, you can go forward. When you really be believe something, uh, uh, it motivates you. Uh, uh, so, 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 as uh, Peter talks to the church uh, in these first four verses, it says, "This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, 
that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of the apostles of the Lord and saints. Knowing this first, that there shall come the last days, both was walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Whatever God said in his word, it's going to happen. His word, you know, we used to say our word is our bond. God's word sure is his bond. Whatever he says in his word, it's going to happen. So, so Paul, I mean, Peter tells them that uh, he wants them to stir up uh, 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 your pure minds. And uh, that stir up is, is aroused. Be mindful. You know, we ought not be so relaxed about this. Uh, you know, that's something in, in anticipation. There's always a moment of expectation. There's a moment of excitement. So, you know, as we live from day to day, you know, all of us have been here more than 15, 20 days now. <laughs> and so the Lord has said he's coming back. Well, you got 10 years old, you got 20 years old, you got 30 years old, you got 40 years old, and they still talking about the Lord coming back. You know, and, 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 and we have to believe that it is so. That's his word. When he said this in the beginning, that's going to happen. And, and, and Peter lets them know that, 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 that and when he talks about uh, uh, those pure minds, uh, that means sincere. You need to be sincere in your thinking uh, 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 without hidden motives or anything. Be sincere in your, in your thinking. And saying that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken by the Holy Prophet. Look, he told them even in Old Testament, the prophets talked about this. Moving over to the New Testament, the apostles talked about this. This is nothing new. The becoming, the second coming of Christ has been talked about for a long time. And it's still relevant in 2023. Uh, uh, and, and, and he says, being mindful, is that you got to remember that. Don't forget that. Recall that every time you can do it. Recall that and remember that over and over again. Uh, uh, and, 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 and it says that the, the commandment of the apostle is to, to believe that in Jesus is the forgiveness of sin. We have to realize all this is happening. That was the apostles talked that over and over again, that, that, that Jesus represents the forgiveness of sin. And when we live, uh, uh, we've got to live a holy life that, that Jesus wants us to. Uh, let, let me tell you this. In a sense, when folks talk about living a holy life, you know what most folks say? I can't live a holy life. You give up, you give me up. You let Satan tug on you too quick. Uh, all of us don't live a perfect life. All of us have a life where sometimes we get off course. But we put our best efforts in to live a holy life. You know uh, 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 what Jesus says? Uh, 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 God says, be holy because I'm holy. So he wants you to be holy. But sometimes we don't, we, we don't want to represent or wear that uh, identification of being holy. We say, that's too much. I can't be holy. Yes, you can. You, you, you can live holy. Hmm. You say that, uh, Sister Bracken, the fourth step word, I-N-G, living, is not just the day that you were born. It means ongoing. It's in progression. Every day we have an opportunity to live a little bit better. You got to put an effort in. But then you say something else, Sister Bracken. You got to know. How are you going to know if you don't know his word?
the word. Because see, we had Jesus, which was the living word. Now, since he's not here, we have the Bible. That's the written word. And so in that Bible is all of our direction, all of our instruction, everything that we need to live in this life, how to live, is in that is in the Bible. But what you've got to get in is you've got to apply it. You've got to understand it. Uh, uh, a lot of people stray away from the Bible and say, I don't want to, it's too confusing. You're not, and, and, he's, and, and Sister Bradley is saying that, you yourself is not going to do it. But the Holy Spirit within you will lead and guide you that that understanding becomes more clearer to you. Uh, our humanness of ourselves cannot do it. But the Spirit that dwells in us will help us. But, but you've got to have a desire uh, to read the Bible. Uh, uh, some people just don't have a desire to read the Bible. They, they just don't. They never pick it up. They never, uh, sometimes they don't know Old Testament uh, books from New Testament books. Uh, and, and, and I'm saying, I'll say this, and you don't have to be a scripture quoting Christian. Just sometimes, but you know, there are some particular scriptures personally that stick with you. That's, that's your personal thing. But you don't have to just be quoting scripture after scripture and quotes like that. That, that doesn't show that you're a Christian. So, so, so in this, uh, uh, Peter says, be mindful of that. Be sincere in your thinking. Th then he reminds them quickly that knowing this first, that there shall, and that's a promise, come in the last day, focus walking after their own lust. And here's what it is. Uh, focus are those who mock you, make fun of you, <laughs> ridicule you. Can I tell you that, that, that there are some in this life right now that maybe you don't recognize them, but they're doing it in a sense. When you're living, when you're trying to live a better life, there are those who ridicule you. There are those who make fun of you. Uh, uh, that's going to always be. Because the more you try to do, the more you try to live a godly life, the more they will make fun of you. Uh, the more they will ridicule you, and 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 and, and they, they try to make fun of you, but but you can't let that dismay you. You you can make fun of me, you can you can talk about me, but I know I'm striving my way. I'm trying to get somewhere. Uh, uh, you you, you want to stay on here, but I I've got a home somewhere else. I, I'm trying to make it to the other side. And then you can laugh at me all you want. You can talk about me all you want, but that's not going to stop me. I'm going to tread on. And here, here's what it says, and, and it amazed me in verse 4. It says, and, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fall, uh, our fathers fell asleep, all things continue in the way they beginning of the creation. Here's what happened there. It's happened in 2023. You know what folks say? Where is God? Look what things are happening right now. Uh, uh, why things ain't better than they were. God is aware of everything that's happened, even before it happened. Uh, yeah, things seemingly to you that things have not changed. But from a spiritual aspect, there is some changing within you. And, and so there are those who are saying, uh, he promised this and he promised that. Those scope of those ones who make fun of you, they're going to say, yeah, you got a God, then why is that happening? He promised this going to happen. Why is it happening to you? Look, God, God, God says, I'll be with you. And all I have to tell folks that he said he'll be with me even to the end of the age. He'll never forsake me, nor will he leave me. And I bank on that promise. Yeah, I have some sick days. Uh, yeah, my health may get bad, but I still believe there's a God. Uh, there are some days when I have broke days. There are some days when there are some lonely days. But there, I believe there's still a God. You're not going to just take that away from me because things don't fit in a pretty picture like you think they ought to be. There is a God, and whatever he promises, is still going to happen. I'm going to hang on to that. Uh, don't let nobody take that away from you, Sister Black. Thank you. 
See, God has in his will is perfect. His ultimate will is that all will be saved. But he has a permissive will, which means he allows some things to happen in your life. Uh, Don't you know as all powerful as Satan is, he has to go to God to get permission? You think Satan is putting loose fancy by himself? I don't care whatever Satan do, he has to get permission. And sometimes you say, well, God, why did you cut him loose on me? Uh, It's because God knows you, Uh and he wants Satan to get on your trail to test you to see if you can come through the test. He wants to see where your faith is. He wants to see how strong you are. He wants to see, are you going to stay on my side? I'll cut loose the hound dogs on you and see how you're going to act. Are you going to go on his side when it gets tough? Uh, Let me tell you, there's going to be trials and tribulation in this life. Satan is going to, look, he did not come here to annoy you. He came to destroy you. And he's going to do everything in his power to destroy you. But God says, guess what? You in my hand. And no man can pluck you out of my hand. Do we really believe that? I believe it. We're going to have some things that, that, that try in our lives. We're going to have some things that look negative or go negative. But God is still with us. He still hold us in the hollow of his hand. He said, because you are mine, I'll let nothing come upon you. Uh, uh, and one of the biggest things that we, we strive for with, and this is the human part of it, when some things start to happen to us mentally and physically, uh, we think God is getting mad. Our bodies are uh, deteriorating. These bodies are not meant to. They're going to deteriorate. That's, that's something we just have to face. I don't care how many days you go to the gym. I don't care if you eat a vegetarian now. And I don't eat red meat. And I don't eat nothing sweet. And you can do that all you want. And that body's going to still go back to where it come from. Uh, you can be as strong as you know I run two miles every day. Uh, uh, the healthiest person there can go to sleep one night and don't wake up. So, so that doesn't have anything to do with it. When, time, when it's your time, it's just your time. But, 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 but we've got to believe that, that okay, you all going to make fun of me and saying everything's the same from the beginning. The world ain't changed. You know, a lot of folks tell you that the world is just worse. I agree to it. But I, I, I point back to them, there's still one yet in control. That's right. I let them know that all the time. Uh-huh. You can say all you want. Well, you know, it used not be this bad. It, it, you're right. You're right. Looks like things are progressively getting bad. Uh-huh. But, but, but God is still yet in control. Amen. And I'll always believe that. Amen. No matter what happens. He just allows some things to happen. I'm going to say this because... Uh, uh, it, it, Deacon Jeff and I was talking about this, uh, even just before this. We're living in 2023. We've experienced it. I think all of us have experienced something a couple years ago, something we've never experienced before. And and God God gave us a view of how things can be dismal. And, and we were in a state of really... Uh, I don't say we were scared, but we were in the, we, this is something we hadn't experienced, so we didn't know how to handle it. But, but God knew it was coming. Uh-huh. And, and don't you know, he said, I'm going to test my people. Yeah. I'm going to draw them away a little while. Uh-huh. I'm going to let something happen in their job, yeah. in their home, in everywhere else. They ain't going to be able to go like they used to go. They ain't going to do, they're they going to be in a different state altogether. Their mindset's going to change. I'm going to test them and see what they do in this time. I'm going to let a little storm come. I'm not going to be a raging storm. But I'm going to let a little storm come in their life a little bit. I'm going to see how they act. And we went all which way. Uh We didn't know what to do. We were doing all kinds of things. Man was telling us to do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. 
And lo and behold, it, I'm not saying it went away, but, 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 but in that time, the church house of all places was empty. We could not come and worship. That ought to have been one of the most difficult, hardening things as a believer. We could not come and fellowship. We could not come and be one with another. It, it was all right listening and live streaming and all that. But it's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. And so all church houses closed up. And that's something, that's, that's, that's kind of a, uh, that's a tragedy. That's right. When you have to close up God's house. Right. They didn't close up ATD. That's right. Huh? You can still go down to the, the car dealer and buy a car. Right. All the businesses was going on, but the church house closed up. Isn't that something? Our lifeline, right. our strongest hold that we ought to have, amidst everything, you know what? And we let them govern us to tell us we couldn't come to church. But I knew some that went on church still continuously. There was a couple of churches that continued to go on their church. And uh, if we wasn't so afraid, we could have went on. But we let the devil scare us. We got scared. And we let the devil back us up. But, but, but in that, uh, 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 so, so he lets us know in his permissive will. He lets some things come in our life. You know, he says in every life a little rain must fall. Amen. He let a little rain come. He didn't let a thunderstorm come. But he let us know that things can get better. But I can retrieve you back from that and put things in there. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm going to say this and move on. Since that time, we got a little glimpse of how things could have been. Uh-huh. It's opened up now. The pews ought to be full. The pews ought to be full. It could have been worse. He showed us how it was, and we almost lost our mind. What if it had gotten worse than what we've done? Now he's opened it up and says, come back into the house. And we're back now on our couches and chairs. Uh-huh. Relax. Uh, you know, that's not good. Uh-huh. We ought to be so thankful. That every opportunity we come and we say, mm-hmm. thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for allowing me to come in this place one more time. It could not have been. And, 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 and I'm going to say this, and, and we've got a decent place to come. That's right. Some folk are struggling to try to keep the lights on and, mm-hmm. and all that. And we've been blessed beyond measure here in New Life. That's what I can't understand. We're not a great big church. But we are a church where God's blessings are right here. Right. And he shows that he cares for us and he just blesses us and we still won't come and worship. That's right. Sometimes new light needs to take and take a picture and thank you. They need to, they need to look at themselves. Uh-huh. What is it going to take? That's right. What is it going to take? Uh, uh, so I, I cut off the lesson, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm just, that, that was just saying that. But 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 in this in our believing, that's believing God's word. And I want to tell you again, whatever He said in His word, it's gonna happen. Right. You can go to sleep on that. Amen. Uh, 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 you can rest assured of that. And I tell folks, you know, sometimes we think about the goodness home, but whatever He promised good is gonna happen. Whatever He promised bad is gonna happen. That's right. So don't think all the good stuff. If there's some things that he promised that because you don't do it, this is going to happen, it's going to happen. That's right. Uh, uh, you, you're not going to get away with nothing. He keeps his promise. And, and, and so, so now uh, when he talks about that, since it talks about believing in God's word, he now talks about uh, believing in, in God's creation. Uh, verses 5 through 9, he says, For this day willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and uh, the earth standing out of the waters and in the waters, whereby the world that was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same world, are kept in store, 
reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment and prediction of ungodly men. For, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day in which the Lord is a, a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. Uh -huh. The Lord is not slackened concerning his promise, as some men count slackness and wrong slushing toward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Uh, you've got to really believe in God's creation. When we think about this, uh, there are those who are ignorant of God's creation. And that word ignorant is unaware. Uh -huh. There are so many that are unaware and believing in God's creation. Uh, uh, and, it, it, and, and, and when we talk of this here in verse, I think, uh, when it says, For this they are willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God. When it talks about this, it says, but this reflects, this refers to, God speaking the, ma the materials into existence out of which he then formed the heavens and the earth. Folks, don't believe God spoke it into existence. He just spoke it into existence. Uh, he didn't have anything. He just spoke it into existence. Folks, it's a hard program. A lot of folks having a hard time believing that. That's right. That's why it's, it's, it's some people don't believe there's a God. That's right. But where did he come from in the beginning? <laughs> well, when was the beginning in the beginning? Well, who made him? He was in the beginning. Now, if you can trace that back and tell me where that was. <laughs> huh? He was always. Because you've got to be, you've got to be grounded in the word of God. Amen. There are some that can come and write some things that logically, logically, sounds all right. Mm -hmm. But biblically, it won't hold water. That's, right. That's why you've got to be biblically sound in your doctrine. Uh -huh. Because if you get into the scientific part of it, you'll think, now how could God just plant the moon and the stars? place them up there and they stay up there. Man had something to do with that. Man didn't have nothing to do with that. Ain't no God can do that. Uh, uh, he can't speak and this stuff happen. Yes, he can. still trying to do that? Are they still trying to be shown? I know it was a big thing for a while. That, that's not, that's, God ain't in that. That's why you've got to be careful in this scientific stuff. You can't get wrapped up in scientific stuff. You, you, you're leaning start to give it a thought, you, you, you've got to be careful. Uh, God created that. What God created, not man. Just man made stuff. We've got to realize what, what God created and what man made. That's two different things. That's, that's totally two different things. God created. God, I mean man made. So, so, so man made stuff can, can I tell you, everything man made ain't going to last. I don't care what you, everything that man made ain't going to last. That's right. Uh, uh, and, 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 and when we think about this, uh, 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 there, there's so many things that, that, that uh, here, here's, here's what, uh, what gets me. They, they try to make so much facsimile of some things. Well, facsimile stuff is only man-made stuff to make it look like. Mm -hmm. But you cannot make anything look like what God created. That's it right. might look like it, but generally it has no substance whatever, it has no value. Mm -hmm. It may have an appearance to look like, mm -hmm. but it has no, it has no, anything not created is not worth it. 
uh, man-made stuff. Look, and, and here's, the, here, here's, the thing, here's the thing I like about this. When God made something, he can create it, he can destroy it. Because he has the authority and, 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 and he has the power to do it. He made it. He, he, he can, it's just like, you know, we talk back and all the time that, 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 that the potter and the clay, uh -huh. who's the clay? Who's the potter? When God makes that, when God makes you, if he's not pleased with you, he can break it. Because why? He can make it and mold it again. But here's the thing that I, I try to make sure. You know, clay has to mold, has to yield into the potter's hand. And so as he's making us, we need to, as he's making us, we need to kind of yield into his making. Sometimes we're going this way. And maybe he has a spout that's going this way. He says, no, I want to make that spout this way. And we're trying to go that way. And so as he molds us and make us, that's we have to yield to his hand, yield to the potter's hand. Because he knows what he wants us to be. He knows when he sets it up, he says, now that's what I want. That's what I want. And, and because we yielded to him and we did everything, he's pleased with it. He says, now that's my vessel. That's the vessel I'm pleased with. And so in his creation, uh, when we look at this and, and think about this, uh, uh, and, and it says, by this willingness, it, they, that they, by the word of God, they don't believe uh, 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 the world was uh, uh, standing out. They don't believe that the world, they believe that the world was already great when it was not. Uh, when it says standing out, I say, this proves the earth was not created all wet but dry and then flooded later and restored to dry state. It was dry, but God flooded it to a wet state, and then he restored it again. Listen, that's why God can create, destroy, mm -hmm. and create again, uh -huh. restore it again. Uh, I wanted to end this, and, I, and I, I'll just back up for a moment, because it, it brings to our mind. We're talking about how we live today and how people make fun of us. Uh, you still going to church? You still believe that, that Christ is coming back? Uh, he ain't come back so far. Why are you still going? You know, you're almost 70 years old, and you've been going to church all this time. He ain't come back yet. So why don't you just give up? He ain't coming back. Huh? But, but can, can you, can you, can you, can you pity yourself, Brother Noah? It's going to rain. It's going to rain. Listen. It's going to rain. Look at that. Look at that man over there. Look what he's doing. Talking about some rain. Hey, we ain't never seen no stuff this rain. Huh? Boy, he done lost his mind. It's going to rain. He just working. And they just fall there every day just making fun of him. It's going to rain. But oh, one day. <laughs> oh, yeah, when the flood came. Huh? Yeah. And all of them on that. No. It rained. <laughs> that's that doesn't believe that. They making fun of us. He's coming back. Keep on what you're doing. Don't give up because one day he is coming back. And, and, and they making fun of you like he ain't coming just like they did Noah. But, but, but just keep on in your trail. Because whatever he promised, it's going to happen. Amen. And so as we look at that. And so, 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 so it says, it says that so, so the world was not. And look how God orchestrated this. It was dry. But because there was so much displeasing, uh, he flooded. God has that power that when he's not creating, he can create this flood. He, here's the thing that I keep in mind that I, I, I don't want to be part of. Now, to swim people, I don't know how to handle fire. When the house is on 
fire and everything's burning up, how you get away from that? Huh? I mean, everything, everywhere you run, it's a flame. Huh? You go outside, the flame is up. You go down the road, you try to get in your car, the flame. How, how do you get away from the fire? So, so we promised that they destroyed it one time by flood, by water. The, huh? That's why we've got to stay rooted because it's going to happen. Uh, you remember years ago, uh, there was a rash of so many fires and so many. I thought the world, I thought they were burning up the world. You look in this state, I mean, thousands and thousands of acres were being burned up. Homes were being burned. And there were some even close here in Texas. And you started to think, is this the time? Uh, every time you look around, there were just cities being burned, not just, just not a few acres. And so it brought to my mind, he said that this time, it's going to be destroyed by fire. We always try to get spiritual warning. We always try to live. How you live it? You know, that's the question sometimes we need to ask. How you live it? Uh, uh, so, Frank, you don't know how I'm living. I don't know how you live it. But I've got to say, look at myself and realize how I am I living. That's the question I have to answer myself. Uh, if, if you living good, I can't live off your living good. It won't do me no good. Uh, if, if my wife is living good and she's doing it, I, I can't live off of that. I can't, it won't benefit me none. It, it's a personal thing. And, and it has to be individually for everybody. Uh, uh, and in this world, can I tell you, you just can't live any kind of way expect to go to heaven. The problem is that 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 we are, God has not just hit us right now, and we think we're getting away. Oh, I, I, I've done this and I've done, but I'm all right now. I, I, no, no, you got to stay on, in God's word. So, so, so when we look at this, when we look at this, and and it talks about that, uh, whereby the world then was being overflowed with water. Uh, 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 the scopers ignore the fact that the world was covered with water before the days of creation. Uh, that's that's God's word. That's that's that that was. They don't believe that it was covered with that, and and it, and it continues to go there. Then it says this: but the heavens and the earth shall now, by the same word, were kept in a reserve unto the fire. And look, that word "kept" means uh, in store. They're kept in store. They're stored up. Uh, uh, against means for uh, until the judgment day. Everything is kept until it's coming. Oh, I'm, if we could just tell folks, judgment is coming. It's coming. You can't escape it. Uh, uh, just like uh, I've heard many times, and, I, and it's, it's a truism, uh, we've got all kinds of appointments, but there's one appointment we cannot cancel. Right. Uh, Sometimes I, uh, Sister Harris, I had an appointment, and you know, I think I'm going to move out. I feel like I'm calling the supper day. Can, can you move this out to such and such a time? And I'm going to say, oh, yeah, we can reschedule it. But there's one appointment. It's set, and you can't cancel it. Can't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, it's on time. <laughs> uh, and when you talk about against the mean, it means that, that, that the burning by fire will occur until the day of judgment. Christians can face that day with confidence because the judgment would mean vindication for the righteous. See, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, 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 Christ, look, 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 who is righteous? Who is righteous? Huh? No, there's more, there's more of us. No, not one. So, so, we are righteous, though, because Here's how we are righteous. Because Christ's righteousness was imputed into us. Amen. It was counted on our account. 
we, we don't have no righteousness. But his righteousness was imputed unto us. That's how we got, because we ourselves wasn't righteous. His righteousness was imputed toward us. It was put on our scorecard. So we have that righteousness. Uh, so, so, so when we look at this, and it talks about uh, the day of judgment and perdition, that perdition means destruction. There's going to be some destruction. I don't know if you've ever been around a, a, a construction site where they demolish a building. Uh, you know, Reverend Shields, they have this thing where they can they can set so much dynamite here, dynamite there. Uh, they can hit something like that in that building and just will come down and almost destroy it. And almost in a perfect state right there. God, when it comes, he's going to destroy it. And it's going to be a terrible time. Folk got to risk that destruction is coming. He says, but, but beloved, but, but he told us, we all got to be worried about that. He said, be not ignorant of this one thing, that for the day of the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years is one day. And here's one thing I want to tell you guys. Don't put God in a time box. You can't put him in no time box. When he said it's going to happen, they said tomorrow. Well, tomorrow's a week from tomorrow. Tomorrow to God may be a hundred years. Uh -huh. So so we can't say, well, and here's here sometimes where we get hung up. Uh, sometimes we'll pray to God and we want it to happen. And and it did not happen in our time. And we think, God, you forgot about me? He says, I ain't getting it. It's been two weeks for you. It's, it's only been a minute. Give me, you know, I'm working on it. We get impatient because we want it to happen on our time. But 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 it's on his time. God is not of, of time. You can't put him in a box of time. And and and, and so 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 in this, uh, uh, that's why in verse nine it says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. What he promised is gonna happen. Don't matter on your time. Don't don't try to put it down date by date, month by month. When I said it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. As some men count slackness, but lo is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. That's what I like about this. God's long suffering. Yes, Lord. Boy, I'm glad that God is long suffering. Uh, in his long suffering, uh, uh, this shows us why God, you know what? God is, has this present world in a delay state. It's only a delay. It's, it's going to happen, but there's a slight delay. Uh, this shows us is why God has delayed so long in pulling down all rebellion and in tolerating. God's tolerating a whole lot of stuff. He's tolerating, but he's long suffering. Uh, he's tolerating his enemies to continue in their evil desires. And that's why some folks say, there ain't no God, why is so much evil been going? Because God is just tolerating. Yeah. It's going to be a time when he's going to destroy us. Yeah. He's long suffering. Uh, it, it, they're, not, they're not all going to work, got away with this. Uh, 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 but, but, but we have to remember that, that, that what, what it, when it happens, it's, you know, just to back up a moment, think this through. Day of the Lord, but don't you know there's going to be seven years of destruction, seven years of so many things happening that we won't be here. All right. That we won't be here. Can you imagine? We can't handle seven days of that. That's right. <laughs> Have you ever had something that you had a bad day? Put seven on. And tell me how you feel at the end of the seven. Ooh, I had a bad day. But, but you have seven bad days to see what happens. But can you imagine destruction for seven years? All the lawlessness that's going to happen, but we'll be here. We won't have to worry about it. Uh, 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 and, and, and then it says that, that but because you know what, and, and I'll just say this because I, I, I want to hear this. 
here's the thing, and I and I and I want to I want to intrigue this or set this in you. When John came as the forerunner, what was his biggest thing that he was seeing? What was John seeing in all that he seen? Because what? Because what? Is anybody getting the message? Is anybody getting the message? John said that before Christ came the first time. Now in 2023, what he's trying to say, and God is just, he said, I'm giving you time. I'm, I'm delaying it. He says, but I want the world to repent. I, I'm giving you time to change and turn around. I'm, 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 I'm holding back. I'm delaying everything. And that's the message of right today. He wants the world to repent and turn to him. And he's giving us day by day. And where are we going? Uh-huh. We're going the other way. Right. We're so far removed from God itself. Uh-huh. Instead of becoming a closer walk and drawing near to him, we are drawing far away. Right. It's a travesty. Uh-huh. When you look at the world today, folks, it's so much ungodly that's just happening right now. It's terrible. People are doing so much ungodly things. People are living so ungodly. And all he is saying, our world, before I come, I want you to repent. I want you to repent. Because there's going to be a time, it's going to be too late. Uh, 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 when that time comes, it's over with. And we really got to believe that. In this lesson, I just want to leave you with We've got hope. That the day of the Lord is coming. And when that day comes, we don't have to be scared. We can be excited. Because whatever's happened, we're in the same one. He's going to take care of things. We won't have to go through all that stuff. We won't have to go all through that burning of fire. Because he's going to take everything on the ground. He's going to burn it up. And can you imagine? We're talking about some acres. Can you imagine a whole city, a whole nation, a whole world Uh being burned up? Then he's going to recreate it down into something new. He will do it. You know, sometimes renovations take some time. Yeah. But he's going to do a renovation of the earth. Uh-huh. He's going to destroy all this. Then he's going to do some renovation. Uh-huh. There's going to be a new heaven uh-huh. and a new earth. Amen. The old is going to pass away. Uh-huh. And everything will become new. Amen. Well, that's something we ought to look for. Amen. Remember, Paul talked about this heaven. He says, you know, I looked up and I saw a third heaven. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when you look at the seed, that, 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 the, the first heaven is this atmospheric heaven that you saw. But the second heaven is beyond, is in the stars and all the rest. But the third heaven is beyond the stars and the moon. And so when they talk about the destruction of the heaven and earth, they're talking about this atmospheric. That's going to be destroyed. That's going to be renovated. That's going to be burned up. And so, so, so we won't be part of that. We'll always be part of it. Mm-hmm. And we won't even have to worry about that. And so, so the, the message is live a holy life. Amen. Live a good life best you can. Uh-huh. Because time is going to run out and it's going to be too late. Mm-hmm. You can cry all you want. You can say give me another. And he's gonna open up that book. I done gave you nine hundred and ninety-nine thousand chances. And you didn't take care of one of them. Now you want one. It's gonna be too late. Uh, 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 you know, I, I, I don't know how many of you have experienced it, but that has to be a tough feeling. You, you get all the way to the airport, you catch your flight, and you say your flight's all over. <laughs> tough feeling. Thank you, Deacon Bryant, for another outstanding job with our Sunday school lesson. At this time, we're going to have highlights from our disciple class.
It's all right for Claire. I like, you know what? Uh, our lesson service this morning said, hope in the day of the Lord. And you remember <laughs> the last part of uh, Dick and Brian's uh, sub lesson this morning was saying repent. Mm -hmm. And I want to reinforce that by saying right now, if you don't have any hope before the day of the Lord, you're going to be in bad shape. So hope in the day of the Lord mm. is only going to be reinforced because you had hope before the day of the Lord. Yeah. I'm waiting on highlights. Amen.
different types of prayer. Let me read this to you right about this something that impacts me this morning. It says, many people in our society live according to a bumper sticker mentality. Some believe they should live fast, die young, and make a beautiful choice. Others believe that the person who dies with the most toys wins. These people live for immediate pleasure and are not concerned with they believe they will somehow escape the consequences of their actions today and in the hereafter. <laughs> they are either ignorant or are flatly denied an eternal Christ and God's judgment of the rebellion. How does society perpetuate the idea of living just for now? What is your mentality? Let's just down a little bit for us. Amen. And I know that this is that people in this regard, please join that wonderful God. Amen. We, we always say something. Amen. But, you know, we just, we just a man that after God no more. Amen. We just trying to do the work of the Lord. Amen. In season and out of season. And we have a great lesson day today and hope in the day of the Lord. I know that the Lord is coming back. Uh -huh. And see, you got to know that. And see, we got to stay fast. Uh -huh. Hold on to the precious and say it. Uh -huh. word, if you know that God is real and He's and then and you already have it in you. Uh -huh. What I'm saying is don't let no one come along That's right. and change what is going on that you know. Right. It's easy to get up rude. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's easy to be put on to the side. Yeah. Uh -huh. But see, if you if you when you first come in uh -huh. and you knew that God was real, uh -huh. you got to hold on to that. Right. And see, you have taught that. Uh -huh. See, God have I mean He has put you to, to teach you uh -huh. that you know you got to hold on to that. Uh -huh. Because it, He's coming back. And uh, I don't know, you know, a lot of people think, well, he, you know, it's been a long time. Uh-huh. It's a long, long time. He, he said he's going to be back. Uh-huh. And, and, and in the scripture, they, they said he, he fall asleep. That's right. But, but the thing is that if he fall asleep, they said he didn't, he did it. Uh -huh. But he's got everything in place. That's right. He, you got to hold on to what you got. Right. Don't go to looking for something else or something new, right. or something greater. Right. See, God is in control. Uh -huh. God is going to make this work. Yeah. I, can't nobody else make it work. I don't care how, how you try to make it, how you try to think you're going to do so much more. Uh -huh. You're going to do what God tells you to do. That's right. And what he lets you do. Uh -huh. Because he's in control. Uh -huh. You just know you, you know, I think I'm going to I'm gonna have all of this. I'm gonna, it's going to be like this. But see, if God... What does God want? What do we want out of life for you? Uh -huh. And that's all I want. I just, what, what God want out of life is me. If I can just do God's will, uh -huh. I don't have to be no big old somebody and everybody know me and right. my name is on the roster and 
I just want God to know me. That's right. And see, and so that that's the, I don't know. I don't want to sound like I'm trying to preach or nothing. All right. See, sometimes that's all right. Sometimes I go a little farther. Yeah. Than I should go. It's all right. But see, one thing about it, you can't don't flesh the Holy Spirit. That's right. If the Spirit is, let someone know that God is. Amen. And see, sometimes you have to talk up a little bit more that's right. than you should at certain places. Uh huh. But see, this thing is real for me. That's all right. Man, I got some children that's up there. Uh-huh. They ain't thinking about the Lord, and they, uh-huh. they ain't trying to do the will of the Lord. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I got some family members that's close to me. Uh-huh. That they, 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 just, they, just, they, just, they think everything is all right. Uh-huh. But see, that's, that's what happens when you, when you know. Uh-huh. But all the value is right. You have no control. That's right. And that's why you get excited about the Lord. You know he can do it. That's right. Now, I don't want to. Now, let me, let me go on and uh, uh, open the door to the church because I get You're the right. gospel word. The door to the church is open this morning. Yeah. That might be someone. Goes to his cell phone. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Sunday School 528 in the year of our Lord, 2023. The school was called to order by Deacon Jefferson at 930. Uh, prayer by Deacon Jefferson. Scripture for today, 2 Peter 3, 1 through 15a. The subject of the lesson, hope in the day of the Lord. The main thought, 2 Peter 3, 9. The teachers took charge of the classes for 45 minutes. Office present two, teachers present two, visitors present none. Grand total attendance for the day, nine. Grand total attendance last Sunday, 11. Total enrollment of the school, 56. New students enrolled today, zero. New members received none. Total offering for today, $14. The weather was sunny. Total Bibles brought, nine. Banner offering class, disciples contributed, 14. Banner Bibles class, disciples contributed, nine. Number of Bibles, nine. Banner attendance class disciples present nine. The privilege was extended. The lesson was reviewed by Reverend Hill. Closing remarks by Deacon Jefferson. Closing song, God Bless Our Sunday School. Sister Moten, Secretary. Brother Derek Hubbard, Acting Secretary. Deacon Lee Jefferson, Superintendent. Brother Derek Hubbard, Assistant Superintendent. Reverend Joseph C. McConnell, Pastor. Hey. Brother Hubbard, you heard the reading of the minutes. Are there necessary corrections? If not, the minutes stand and please be read. Yes. Are there any announcements? I have a couple of announcements to make. Uh, Sister Jones, I want I want to appreciate you right now and, and your committee for the beautiful job Thank you've you. done. Yeah. in the fellowship hall for uh, our pastoral anniversary today. Uh, you did a tremendous job. Uh, 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 kudos to you, uh, both of you, all of you. Uh, on Today at 11 o'clock morning, which we will have a guest speaker in the person of uh, Pastor Kevin Workman of the Rising Star Baptist Church. And then on this afternoon at 3 o'clock, we will have the Pastor of the Mount Zion Baptist Church, uh, Pastor uh, Dr. Daryl Hart. Let's come back out. We're inviting people to come to our home. Let's come out and be hospitable and show the people how much we love and care about our pastor, even though this is the first pastoral anniversary for him. I want to see an outpouring of love from all the membership of the New Light Church. We should be in the pews. We should be rejoicing. We should have a hallelujah good time today. And just to make sure we don't make any mistakes about all that money we want to give to the pastor today, 
we're going to have a basket set up over here with his name on it. Pastor Joseph C. McCormick. If you're going to make out a check, make it out to Pastor Joseph C. McCormick. That $50 bill, you can put it in that basket. <laughs> you can put it in that basket. And also, someone provided a love offering envelope. If you want one of these, we'll provide one for you. You might not want everybody to see that you're giving $100, so you can put it in, put it in this envelope. God bless all of us. God bless the New Light Church. And let's come back and, and support our pastor this, this afternoon, this morning and this afternoon. Amen. Are there any other announcements? If nothing else, we're ready to go. God bless our Sunday school. Help it to grow. Stand beside it and guide it. That the knowledge of God we might know. Bless the teachers, the superintendent, and the students that we teach. God bless our Sunday school. Bless those we might reach. God Sunday school, bless those we might read. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, because he is faithful that promise. God bless you, you are excused. The book is with those that won't be in.